will start by downloading the virtual uh, VMware workstation from the link provided to you from your professor, me if you're one of my students, or if you purchase VMware workstation. We're looking at version 8 now, so the install is finishing up, it's almost finished. So I'll take a, a short break and we'll jump right back in when the install is finished. Okay, so it looks like our install is finished and we're ready to start working with VMware Workstation 8. So click finish. On your desktop you will see a shortcut for VMware Workstation. I just put this in here. This is another virtualization technology that I use sometimes, but today we're just going to be concentrating on VMware. So we'll double click this to open it. And this is the first time that I'm opening this version. I previously had version 7 installed. So you'll go through and accept all the, the licenses and agreement, the, all the terms. VMware Workstation will open to this, your desktop view. From here, you'll have the Home tab. I recommend always leaving this tab. It's an easy way to uh, do common tasks that you want to do. Uh, then you'll have, if you have any virtual machines previously installed, you'll see these here. Uh, so right now I have Ubuntu and does it tell me anything else about it? No, I'm not, I can't remember exactly which version of Ubuntu I have. And then I have the developer edition of Windows 8. So what we want to take a look at is how do we create a new virtual machine? We'll start going by to the Home tab or you could go to File and then select New Virtual Machine. Um, we'll do it the easy way. We'll go to Home, click New Virtual Machine and for this we're just going to uh, accept the typical recommend recommended settings we will be installing from an ISO file an ISO file is a file that you've downloaded an operating system image uh, this can be any op you know pretty much any operating system you can get an ISO file if you take that ISO file and you actually execute it on your PC what you'll do is you'll burn it to a disk and then you'll create an in installer disk. So you can install from a disk or from the file directly. I'll choose this way because it'll save me from using an extra disk. So you'll browse to the, uh, the ISO file. Let me get here. So I will go for a Windows 7 install. So I've, I've given the path to the ISO file, click next, and then you'll need the product key. So I'm going to pause it and blank out my product key. So one moment. Okay, so I've entered my product uh, key and entered a password for my new virtual machine. This is asking where I want the virtual machine to be saved. Um, let me double check to make sure I have enough space on that drive. Let's browse to a separate drive, a new drive. Let's see. Documents. I'm just creating the folder that I want this to be stored on. So I'm going to select where I want this to be saved and I will save it in virtual machines on my C drive. I just have more space there for, my, for me to use. Maybe. So that way. Okay, and then what do I want the maximum size for this uh, virtual machine to grow to? So I'll say 60 gigs. I have plenty of space. And we'll accept this default here. Split into multiple, multiple files. Next, so then it gives me a little recap of the options that I've chosen. 
the RAM, be very careful with this. If you are if you have a system with limited RAM, uh, you will not be able to run multiple machines at once. I think I have about 9 gigs of RAM, so I should be fine with running 1024, uh, running 1 gig. So and then click Finish. And so this process will take a few moments. It's the same process as if you were installing uh, Windows 7 on a you know direct hardware PC. So you'll go through all the same steps. Right here, it's just going through and it's detecting all of my USB devices. So we got that. This is one of the things I really like about VMware Workstation versus using the virtual PC uh, option that I showed earlier. Uh, VMware has better hardware support in my opinion and VMware has been kind enough to allow uh, the our Macon State students access to this you know nice software for free if you're one of my students so we'll go through the install I'll pause it for time's sake and just pick it back up here and there when something important comes across the screen So we see this setup starting here. So the virtual machine is restarting and the install is moving along. Okay, so it looks like the install was successful and Windows 7 is setting up the computer for the first boot, uh, checking video performance, doing things like that. So again, I want to remind you that if you are one of my students, you can get this software free of charge uh, through our VMware Alliance. Uh, we're using Workstation 8. This software is usually around 200 bucks, I believe. So again, if you're one of my students, you can get this software free. You can contact me to get access to the site. Uh, then you can visit either this uh, on the hubs.com store or I've created a tiny URL, easier to remember. So tinyurl.com slash MSCVM, as in Macon State College, VM as virtual machine. VMware. So back here our virtual machine is starting up and we should have it up and going and so this is really all there is to creating a virtual machine and you can do this for as many virtual machines as you like um, and then once you get into the virtual machine it's just like working on a, a real physical computer. Uh, the good thing is you can make mistakes, you can test software out if you make any mistake it's isolated it's in this virtual machine you're not really damaging anything so this is the way that I would recommend going about testing um, software uh, downloading maybe files that you need but you're not completely sure about and you want to test it in a, in a safe sandbox environment VMware's are great for that so I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and best of luck